There are very few films that I consider to be modern classics, but Edge of Tomorrow, starring Tom Cruise, easily ranks as one of my absolute favorite movies that has been released in recent memory. Edge of Tomorrow, or as it's come to be known, Live, Die, Repeat, is one of those rare films that has a perfect combination of action, entertaining characters, and an engaging plot. But on top of all those positive attributes, one of my favorite things about Edge of Tomorrow is none other than the character of Master Sergeant Farrell, played by the late great Bill Paxton. In a way, this came as a surprise to me, because as iconic of an actor that Paxton was, with such films as Twister and Apollo 13 in his filmography, I never thought of Paxton as a particularly good actor, until I saw Edge of Tomorrow. In a film full of memorable moments and characters, Paxton's Master Sergeant Farrell steals the show in nearly every scene he's in. With his tough military bearing and quippy one-liners, Farrell is instantly memorable and likable. Much of the success of Farrell's character comes down to the clever writing, but Paxton's self-assured portrayal can't be understated. While Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt do a fabulous job carrying the film as a whole, Bill Paxton's character is the cherry on top that helps make Edge of Tomorrow special. With a plot mechanic of living the same day over and over again, you need the right actors to bring a freshness to each scene, no matter how many times you've already seen it. And that's exactly what Paxton brought to the table. Every time we see Paxton, it's always exciting and fun to see how his character reacts to the slightly varied events playing out around him. But for as funny of a character that Farrell is, it's not just his wit that makes him endearing, but his straightforward demeanor and soldierly wisdom. For as amusing as many of Farrell's scenes are, the moment that always sticks out to me the most with Master Sergeant Farrell happens to be the moment when he's at his most genuine. Unlike some motivational speeches from leaders that come across as forced, Today we face the monsters that are at our door and bring the fight to them. Today we are canceling the apocalypse! Farrell's moment of inspiration is simple and straightforward in a blink and you'll miss it scene. The moment comes after Cruz's character has been railroaded into the front lines for failing to accept a position on the ground with a film crew to record acts of valor and courage against the alien threat known as Mimics. Arrest this man. As a military marketing man, Cruz's cage finds himself completely and utterly out of his depth. And of course, Master Sergeant Farrell is a thorn in Cage's side and is always there to make sure Cage stays in line. In this way, Farrell is an antagonist to Cruz's protagonist, but not in an evil way. Being the antagonist to Cruz is just simply Farrell's job, and he's very good at what he does. As Farrell's military unit, J-Squad, is flying towards the France coast for the first time, where they plan to make their drop, Farrell appears and says, We lost Germany! We lost France! If we lose today, we won't get the fight enough! I know the pressure on you is enormous! Two minutes to drop! It's all right to be scared. Remember, there's no courage without fear. This is such a simple scene and such a simple line, and yet I have always found myself fascinated with this powerful statement that Farrell delivers. You could see this same line being told with grand gravitas from the likes of President Thomas J. Whitmore in Independence Day, where it's not just simply said, but shouted through a bullhorn with swelling emotional music to back it up. But as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night, we will not vanish without a fight. And yet, there is none of that in Edge of Tomorrow. Instead, that line, remember there is no courage without fear, is said in as candid and matter-of-fact way as I could possibly imagine, which is probably why it stood out to me so much over the years. Instead of shouting the message at me, it was done so subtly that it forced me to think about it to understand it. After all, it made me question what courage actually is. Is fear literally a prerequisite to courage? I grew up with the idea that soldiers and warriors were devoid of fear, that fear was a weakness. Even the dictionary defines courage as the quality of mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty, danger, pain, etc. without fear. In the critically maligned After Earth, Jaden Smith's character learns to be completely devoid of fear by the end in his effort to fight back against the Skrell alien. But that idea of being able to live a life without fear never comes across as true to life, because it isn't. 
Obviously people feel fear and are fearful about vastly different things and to varying degrees, but the fact remains that fear is a constant factor that can't be stamped out of our psyches completely, even for the most courageous among us. This is something that Christopher Nolan understood when fleshing out the themes of Batman Begins. The bats again. You know why they attacked you, don't you? They were afraid of you. Afraid of me? All creatures feel fear. Even the scary ones. Especially the scary ones. So if fear is ever present, then how do we deal with it? I think we're conditioned to think of fear in our society as a negative emotion, which makes it something that we never want to acknowledge or face. In that way, we think that negative equals bad. In modern life, there are certain emotions, such as depression and fear, that are taught to be shunned and avoided at all costs, in the pursuit of eternal happiness. However, this is a false notion. All emotions are valid and exist for a purpose, which means that even the perceived negative ones are natural and normal to experience. Yes, there are plenty of emotions like depression that shouldn't be wallowed in, but that doesn't mean that there isn't any utility with depression. All emotions have a time and a place, especially the negative ones. Even happiness, which is our God-given right to pursue, can't and shouldn't be a constant state of mind. Even if it were possible to be happy 24-7, it would then cease to be happiness. And when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. So what about this idea that there can be no courage without fear? Yes, fear can be a negative emotion, but how do we flip it into something useful and valuable if it's not wrong to be experienced? A quote that is attributed to the iconic actor John Wayne says, Courage is being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. You have to face fear enough to get to the point where you can acknowledge your fear and press forward regardless of it. Only by confronting things that we're afraid of does the fear start to dissipate. If you have no fear, then there is nothing to overcome, and there is simply nothing praiseworthy about a person who never surmounts any obstacles in their life. As such, it's quite simply totally okay to feel fear and to be scared at times. In fact, it's perfectly normal. But once you decide to confront enough scary obstacles in your life, you learn to recognize that fear isn't something that can or should hold you back from doing the things that need to get done. Just because you're scared, that doesn't give you a right to shun responsibility, or to avoid doing things that will force you to learn and grow. Put simply, living in a bubble is not the right answer to live your life. While not everyone has to go to war in a literal sense, in a way our daily lives are a battle of will. As such, there are plenty of things to be fearful of throughout our everyday lives. We fear rejection, failure, and sometimes even success. But only by embracing the battle and conquering our fear do we truly experience the fiery crucible where we can be forged into something better than we were yesterday. So just remember, it's alright to be scared. There is no courage without fear. But enough from me. What did you think about Edge of Tomorrow and Master Sergeant Farrell? If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. And controls everything else worth controlling in my state. Yes, and a man even powerful enough to control congressmen, and I saw three of them in his room the day I went up to see him. Well, the Senator yield. No, sir, I will not yield. And this same man, Mr. James Taylor, came down here and offered me a seat in this Senate for the next 20 years.